So this is the plan. I remind to you a bit uh, the, all the context introduced yesterday on well post uh, linear system, very briefly. Uh, then uh, I will go to reachable spaces. Uh, and since uh, uh, Belasen incited me yesterday, I will do some remarks uh, on, on Hume. Uh, and uh, uh, the, its connection with, uh, um, with reachable spaces. The fourth part is devoted to uh, the study, detailed study of the reachable uh, space for the constant coefficients, but in fact, not only uh, for, for, for the heat equation with possibly some variable coefficients. Uh, and um, uh, in fact, this, uh, um, this uh, how would I say, um, uh, variable coefficients part will be mostly included in the part on robustness. I, and I will include with some conclusions and remarks. Sorry, it went down, I realize only now. So, once again, the constant, I, I'll have a, a, a well posed system, uh, which is given by, uh, I, I can give it in various. Uh, Ways, but uh, anyhow, a basic ingredient is uh, a C0 semi group uh, with its generator. Uh, then I can either introduce an, what's called a control operator, which goes from U to X minus one, uh, and uh, which is uh, admissible. Admissible being that this integral, uh, this integral lies for every T in, uh, in X. And a typical example, which uh, uh, of this kind of pairs A, B, uh, is when A is a, a strictly negative operator, then if uh, B is bounded, but not too much, there is a certain degree of unboundedness allowed. So he is very, in this, for this particular A, it's very easy to decide which Bs are or not admissible. I can go up to a space X minus one half Imagine that this is a kind of scale of a negative uh, of interpolation spaces between x and x minus one, uh, which I have defined, and x minus half would be at, at the middle. We'll see in possible examples uh, uh, what this space uh, really uh, means. Uh, so here we know it is not the case, for instance, with the, it's more difficult to decide just from regularity properties which bees are, which unbounded bees, of course, are admissible if A is, for instance, the generator of a, a unitary group. In other terms, when A is a skewer joint. Okay, so this was the context I longly introduced uh, uh, yesterday. Now, let me go to reachable space and to controllability types. What is a reachable space at time tau? By definition, is the range of phi tau. Uh, so what is this? Let, my, let, uh, uh, let me remind that uh, uh, phi tau of an input function u, it's the value of my state, my state at instance tau. So if I have, if I want to write with differential equation, uh, as most uh, are more accustomed, if I have z, that, z dot of t is equal to a z of t plus b u of t, with the initial data zero, then provided that all this is well defined, phi tau of u will be z of tau. Uh, so uh, the range of phi tau is uh, the set of all possible states I, I can obtain uh, having my, uh, my input uh, uh, completely free, uh, the choice of my completely uh, free input in the space L2, I can take uh, zero tau capital U. So clearly, this is a notion. If we know this, we know everything about the system effect, about the control properties of the system. But the problem is that determining uh, this, uh, this space uh, is, uh, in general, not an easy uh, task. Uh, what we can say in a very general uh, setting, that uh, this, uh, for every tau, this space can be uh, endowed with a Hilbert space structure uh, if I define this norm. So what is this norm? It's the norm of the minimal L2 control. Some, some call it Hume control, uh, uh, which uh, uh, allows us uh, to, to reach uh, eta uh, in time tau. 
so I, a priori it's an infinum. Uh, we will see that uh, in, uh, uh, in fact, it, it will be most of the situation will be a, a minimum here. So the first result uh, which uh, uh, gives a full characterization of this space is, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Kalman's uh, result from uh, 63, which says that for every tau, strictly positive, the range of e tau is the range of this operator. So these will be matrices, x and u are finite dimensional. These are matrices which I just juxtapose. So imagine that b is a Kalman matrix, then I multiply by a, uh, by a square up to a power n minus 1, and I put them one near the other, I get a big matrix, and the rank of this matrix uh, is, in fact, the range of this oper the operator uh, is uh, uh, the range of eta. Uh, so more classically, you, you have encountered this result in the form, if this matrix is a full rank, the system is set controllable. I'll come back to that. Uh, so what, what should we remark? Uh, maybe I'll remark immediately here. It, it does not depend on tau. Very surprisingly, no? A bit. Because it says all what you are able to do in a very long time, you will be able to do in a also a very short one. Uh, well, why is it not completely surprisingly? Uh, because we have no constraints on the control. What will happen, and if we want to, do, want to do the same job in very short time, we will need a very large uh, input uh, U. Uh, also, what one can prove, but I will not discuss this too much, that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, this uh, space is what I can reach with control, which are much smoother. Even analytic, uh, real analytic signals, I will get the same thing. So all this will no longer be true in general in infinite dimensions. So my reachable space in infinite dimensions may depend on, on, on the time. Uh, there will essentially always be a big difference in uh, what I can achieve with smooth inputs, inputs or with, with inputs which are uh, just uh, L2. And now, as I mentioned, if we know about range of eta, we know everything. Uh, so, in particular, we can define the various controllability times, types. Uh, so, exact controllability in time tau means that phi tau is on. Null controllability in time tau also described in terms of the range of, uh, of the reachable space, uh, means that the range of e tau contains the range of the semigroup uh, at instant tau. Why this? Because, as you know, uh, the solution of this equation, now if I add, uh, if I add here z of 0 is equal to z0 instead of that, uh, it will become z of uh, tau at instant tau is equal to t tau z0 plus phi tau u. Uh, so if I want to have z of tau is equal to 0, I have to find the control such that phi tau u is equal to minus t tau of z0, which is always possible, if and, uh, which is possible if and only if range of phi tau contains the range of t tau. So these two properties are, uh, are equivalent. The usual way one uh, formulates uh, Null controllability and uh, uh, this. Finally, approximate controllability means that the range of phi tau is dense in X. So these are the main three types of controllability for infinite dimensional systems, and all of them uh, are defined in terms of the reachable space in a very natural way. Uh, so uh, we will see, but uh, it's easy to find examples. Uh, on which uh, 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 the strongest controllability property uh, does not hold, but uh, weaker ones, uh, the second or the third, uh, are, are valid. Uh, nevertheless, in finite dimensions, these three concepts are completely equivalent, and they do not depend on time. So usually, uh, in finite dimensions, there is only one concept of controllability, which says range of tau is equal to x. And this is simply called controllability. No other, uh, no other uh, let's say, uh, attribute. Well, uh, we don't know much, as I mentioned. A classical example already mentioned by, uh, uh, by Belasen, Belasen is in fact the subject of his, uh, of his uh, 
lectures. Uh, it's uh, uh, a wave equation with, um, let's say, distributed control. So I have uh, a wave equation in an open set capital omega. Of course, we have to make assumptions on this set, besides the fact that it's bounded. You need a certain smoothness of the boundary. And you uh, act by a control which is active, you, you dependent on TNX, in an open subset O, which could be like this, but could be anywhere a priori. A, a priori anywhere. And then there is uh, this famous uh, result of Bardos, Le Bon, and Roche, which has been refined by many authors after, which says that uh, this uh, system is exactly controllable if and only if, in time tau, if and only if any light ray traveling in this domain and uh, reflecting according to the geometric optics law at the boundary will hit the control region in a time at most equal to tau. Uh, so a particular case when this holds in this one, when I take O to be a neighborhood of the whole boundary. Uh, and uh, in this case, we can do much simpler proofs. There is a, a, a very simple proof of Kansheng Liu, which uh, is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I don't, which is, has been done in, in the 80s. Uh, so uh, the proof becomes very complicated when you want to, to have sharp conditions on, on, on the geometry. Uh, but there are many situations in which the proof of this result is simple, but I will not at all speak about this. So this is a particular case when we know the reachable space. Exact controllable case, because we know it's all the space. Uh, but uh, uh, more interesting situations are exactly those in which uh, this is not the case. For instance, here, if I, even here, if I want to uh, say what is the reachable space at instant smaller than this critical time tau, very few results are available, I'm not aware. Of, of many things, or if uh, my uh, domain is very small, O becomes, uh, let's say, I take a small ball at the middle. There are some results uh, in a certain sense in this direction due to Luke Robiano, but again, very few things are available. We don't know much about the reachable space in the cases where my PD is wave type equation and my geometric optics condition is violated. Null controllability is uh, uh, intimately connected to the concept of um, uh, reachable space. Uh, so uh, there is a proposition, a result due to, to Fattorini with a quite complicated proof, uh, and with Zeidman with a proof which is simple and which I immediately give, which says that if AB is null controllable in any time, important, then the range of it out does not depend on time. So I can speak about reachable space without S at the end. Huh? Not reachable spaces. I can speak about one reachable space which uh, 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 does not depend uh, on time. So how uh, uh, do I prove this? Uh, so how Zeidman uh, proved this? Uh, what's obvious? It's that uh, uh, if uh, tau is larger than t, the range of phi tau is included in the, the range of phi t will be included in the range of phi tau. Why? Because what I can do in longer time, I can, I can do in a shorter one. Obviously, I can formalize this without any problem. Now, uh, let us uh, uh, prove uh, uh, that if t is larger than tau, uh, then still I have range of phi tau is equal to range of phi t. In other words, what I'm able to do in a large time, small t, I am able also to do in a smaller one, which is tau. To this aim, the best thing is to, to do this picture. Uh, so I assume here is t, which is larger than tau. Uh, and I assume that I can go with an appropriate control from the initial state 0 to the final state eta. And that w is the corresponding trajectory. No? That's the definition of the fact that eta is in the right range of uh, phi t, no? Then I take this trajectory and the control and I shift them all to the left with the distance t minus tau. I will get this red trajectory denoted w tilt. Uh, okay, which indeed goes from zero but at a negative time uh, to eta at time tau. Why this uh, ends, in fact, my proof? 
I write it formally. So this is my shift, the definition of U tilde, of W tilde. Uh, and then I know that eta is W of T. It's also W tilde of tau. But uh, the difference is that for W tilde, the initial data is not zero, but it will be something. Uh, so the solution W tilde, which is a solution of my controlled uh, equa differential equation, will be the semigroup applied to its value for t equal to zero plus phi tau u, u tilde. But now the range of phi tau for every tau uh, contains the range of, of, of t tau. So this sum will be in, in the range of phi tau and I'm done. That's a proof, a very beautiful proof of, um, uh, of Zeidman. Uh, then another remark, which was uh, essential for um, uh, some developments in our paper, when, which is very easy, has been done by Thomas Normand uh, during his memoir of, uh, of, of Master, which says that uh, if I uh, apply phi tau just to inputs which divided by square root of t are in L2, then I get the same thing. Again, only for null controllable systems in any time. Why this? This is a, even a simpler proof. Uh, so I know that the range, uh, now I know that the range of phi tau does not depend on tau. So it means that what I, I can do in, in some time uh, depend, does not depend on, on, on this time. So I assume that uh, uh, here I have only, uh, I have a tau. Uh, here's a state uh, z. Uh, so I can go from zero to uh, to some eta in time tau. Very well, but then I know that I can go also in a shorter time. And so in particular, I can do nothing. Here I take u equal to zero, and then I, I know that I can find an input to reach the uh, in, in time here, which will be uh, tau minus, uh, let's say, tau star. So in particular, this, uh, this kind of input, which is zero uh, and uh, something appropriate after, satisfies the divided by square root of t uh, is, in, uh, is in L2. So in fact, is, we, ha we are much stronger than that. But that's what we have, we need it. We can put there any power, we can uh, put there any function which vanishes at the origin only, for instance. Uh, so again, this holds only if my system is null controllable in uh, any time, or I don't know if only, but in particular, if uh, this, uh, this happens. Okay, so now what, uh, uh, two words about, uh, about Hume, uh, which means Hilbert Unigno's method, and most of the people, I think, especially young people, have no idea why this name uh, uh, is, uh, is used. I'll try to, to give an explanation of this fact. Uh, and in fact, it's a, I would say, uh, extremely simple consequence of a very old functional analytic result, which uh, in 1966 has been announced by Douglas as, as folklore in functional analysis. Uh, so uh, uh, it's really a simple consequence. This result itself is a simple co consequence of the closed graph theorem. And what does it say? I have two, uh, two Hilbert spaces, Z and X, uh, and a bounded operator from Z to X. Uh, then the following assertions are equivalent. G is onto. G star, it's a joint here. I identify Z and X with its dual, but, but I, I'm not obliged. I can, I can replace this by, by the dual spaces. Uh, and uh, the same with G. Uh, uh, G star is bounded from below. And G, G star larger than zero, strictly positive. Strictly positive meaning that uh, there is something like that. Yeah? Uh, kind of uh, coercivity. So it's a, and in this case, if this stays my all, I have also an estimate on the, of the inverse of this operator in terms uh, of this uh, constant uh, small m. So it's proved in, uh, in uh, Douglas, uh, essentially, and also it's a, it's a theorem in uh, the appendix, one of the appendices of our book. Uh, now, uh, this it will be applied to something called the controllability gramian, uh, which, uh, uh, or, has been, um, uh, has been um, le let's say, um, uh, baptized also a Hume operator, or its inverse has been rebaptized Hume, Hume operator much later. Uh, 
which is the controllability gradient, uh, R tau is equal phi tau, phi tau star. Uh, so let me remind you that phi, this phi tau, which is defined here, is a linear bounded operator from L tau of zero tau u to x. So phi tau star, of course, will do the, the opposite traject. And I will have a, um, even a formula for it, which will, uh, will appear immediately. Uh, so if B is bounded, then uh, uh, R tau writes exactly like this, which is a formula known in finite dimensions. If it's unbounded but admissible, uh, we have to, ex to, to op we obtain this operator. We, the only way we can uh, write it is rigorously is like that. Once that phi tau is itself an extension. And uh, the proposition, which is, which is Hume, uh, uh, as uh, described these days, uh, is that uh, if uh, uh, that the pair T phi is exactly controllable in some time, if and only if R tau larger than zero, this is the consequence of the previous theorem applied to the operator R tau. Uh, uh, and uh, if uh, uh, this holds, then the control given by phi tau star r tau minus one, which will be invertible z zero, uh, will drive my system from zero to z zero. And it will be the minimal norm control uh, which does uh, uh, this job. So how I prove this last part? Uh, this last part uh, is very simple. Uh, it's one line. Uh, I do phi tau. Of this control, phi tau star r tau minus one of z zero, and this is z zero. No, by definition, r tau is the inverse of phi tau phi tau star. Uh, and uh, why it is with minimal norm? Uh, uh, let let v is equal to u plus phi. Uh, another control. such that phi tau v uh, is equal to uh, z0. So phi tau v is equal to phi tau u. This means that phi belongs uh, to uh, the kernel of phi tau, of course, uh, which is uh, uh, equal to the uh, range uh, of uh, phi tau star orthogonal, no? And then I'm done because u is in the range of phi tau star. Since u by construction is in the range, this is u of uh, phi tau star, I, I will have uh, uh, norm of v squared is equal to norm of u squared plus norm of phi squared larger than the norm of u squared. And we are done. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the, whole, uh, the whole proof. So in practice, how, how is this Hume method uh, uh, applied, uh, you uh, first, uh, you have to, to compute R, R tau. In fact, you have to compute, uh, the, to evaluate the, the gradient and then to invert it. How you invert it, that's another job. That's uh, something which in practice, of course, is not, uh, is not easy. Uh, sorry. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, I, I take an eta to, to evaluate. I want to evaluate uh, R tau applied to eta for some eta in x. To this aim, I first compute the semi-group applied at uh, tau minus t applied to eta. I apply b star. I obtain a signal, which I call v, at, v of t. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, I, I take, uh, I, I, will, I, I should invert, given a z0, which is a target, I find the eta, which has this property. 
where the operator r tau is defined, let's say, algorithmically like this, I find uh, the right eta and my control u is then uh, simply uh, written, uh, written here. I don't know if it's again a tau minus t or it's just a t. I'm not completely sure, but it's something of this, of this kind. And then we say, in principle, we found the minimal norm control. Then there is also a discussion, is it a good one? Nobody knows, in fact, uh, because there are other ways to construct uh, uh, controls, uh, like by Russell's method. Uh, uh, Russell's, I mean, uh, stabilizability implies controllability method. It's a very beautiful construction. Uh, so uh, somehow the Hume control is very, uh, very rough. Uh, because uh, it wants to do things in a very uh, uh, strong manner. Uh, sometimes it may be, um, uh, let's say, more convenient to use other construction, but of course it's... A, and for instance, also, sometimes we'll see in our last lecture, you d I'm not interested in the L2 norm, but in the L infinity norm of the control. Uh, and to end up, uh, one should say that engineers do not care about exact control. Never. Even in finite dimensions, all that, what they do is mainly more robust control, uh, which means that they want performance, but they want also robustness. They need feedbacks. They need uh, to evaluate the influence of perturbations. So controllability, exact or not exact, uh, is uh, just a very useful, a very important, a priori information before beginning the real engineering uh, uh, job. But, uh, uh, for instance, if you take the MATLAB control package, uh, there is no instruction to compute the exact control. You can look for it. Such a thing does not exist uh, for finite dimensional system, of course. Uh, on the contrary, there are many, uh, 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 many uh, commands uh, how to uh, do pole placement, how to design feedbacks, how to solve Riccati equations. Uh, so this is, let's say, uh, uh, the package as, as used in practice. But to be sure that this works, you need information like, like controllability. Of course, we don't have such a control uh, package for PDEs, unfortunately, uh, but uh, maybe one day. Uh, so the original, in fact, the original form of the, uh, and of the Hilbert uniqueness method and something which justifies uh, this uh, terminology is this proposition, which I rewrote at my, uh, in my style, uh, something which you can see the, in the original Lyon's book. It says you what is the norm, in fact, in the dual of the reachable space. It's, uh, but here I assume just that I have approximate controllability. So I know that A, B approximately controllable, is equivalent to the fact that phi tau star is onto. So this expression, uh, phi tau star uh, eta, defines a norm on the state space. So the map eta goes, if AB is approximately controllable, in L2 of 0 tau u is a norm on x. And then by, by a version of the theorem I just have shown, of the abstract theorem uh, which I have shown, we can prove that uh, this norm uh, is, in fact, the norm of the dual of range of phi tau with respect to x, because this notion also makes sense, no? because I have approximate controllability. Range of phi tau included in x is dense. So I can do complete my Gelfand triple. And I have range of phi tau prime. Uh, so uh, if I can identify this norm in a certain sense, I can identify the range of phi tau. Let me come back to an example which I have written uh, last time. Uh, so w dot minus Wxx is equal to u of t delta c. Uh, and uh, uh, here I have uh, uh, 
uh, I take this control system, W of T0 is equal to W of T pi uh, is equal to 0. So a string with a, a pointwise actuator. Uh, so this is my system. What will be the A star system, the adjoint system, uh, which will give me fit, fit, fit out star? Uh, so uh, here uh, I will have, um, uh, so uh, remember that here I have x is equal to h1, w, 1, 2, 0 of 0 pi times L2 of 0 pi. Uh, and uh, I have um, u is equal to c. Uh, and uh, the adjoint problem will be uh, phi dot minus uh, uh, phi x x is equal to zero because the generator is skew adjoint here. Uh, when I, I have formally, I have to pass by the further of the system. Phi of t0 is equal to phi of ty, ty p is equal to 0. That's the, the adjoint system. I take some initial data. Phi dot of 0 and x is equal to g of x. And uh, uh, then uh, it's simply to, when we do the computations, it's very simply to remark that phi tau star applied to uh, initial data, fg uh, at point t, uh, is nothing else that uh, the sum uh, of uh, n, a n, I did more or less, or less the computation yesterday, uh, it's equal first uh, uh, that at uh, phi dot, uh, of at t and c, so the the trace of phi at uh, the derivative in time of phi at c, uh, and which uh, uh, writes in a Fourier series sum of minus n uh, a n sine of n n uh, f n uh, sine n t plus uh, n g n. Uh, cosine nt time of sinus of uh, uh, nxc, uh, sum n larger than 1, where what is fn? Uh, f writes f of x writes sum of fn sinus of nx, and g of x writes sum of ngn sinus of x. Okay, and what can I say now about this norm? So now the norm which I will be interested in is the norm of this quantity in L2 of 0 tau. So I can say if tau larger or equal to 2 pi, if tau is, if tau is smaller than 2 pi, I cannot say too much. But if tau is larger or equal to 2 pi, I can say that uh, uh, the norm of uh, that integral from zero to tau of phi dot of t and six squared dt will be equivalent to the sum of uh, n two f n squared plus uh, uh, g n squared times sine squared of nx. Why? Because I just use the fact that sinus of nt and cosine of nt are, an or, are orthogonal in L2 of 0 to pi. It's not the case if, if, it's, if I'm with time smaller than 2 pi. And if, if, tai, if, if, if tau is larger than 2 pi, I still have this because I use the periodicity. The, the constants in the equivalence of course, it will depend on time, on tau, but provided that the tau is larger than 2 pi. Okay, now, so this is the norm in the dual. Now, what I can I say is here, so 
am I approximately controllable? I need to be approximately controllable to apply it, no? Uh, approximate controllability requires uh, to have, if phi dot is, if this phi dot is zero, I need all the coefficients to be zero. So approximate controllability here is equivalent to the fact that C is uh, irrational. Very surprising fact uh, at the first glance. Uh, Okay, so now I assume that uh, I assume that this holds. Then what this is the dual of the reachable space, then what will be the reachable space? It's easy to see that in the in this case the range of phi tau will be the set of Fg in X having the property that sum of N2 Fn2 plus gn2 divided by sinus squared uh, of uh, n, n psi uh, is finite. Again, I took x from uh, as a pivot space. That's important uh, to, to get this duality. This is a bit, a bit of work, but we, is, is really a simple exercise. So this space will depend on psi, and here, uh, if uh, if this sinus n psi becomes small, even if psi is irrational, sinus of n psi can be very small. Uh, so this condition becomes very, uh, very restrictive. Uh, so the best, in fact, the best location, best meaning the largest reachable space uh, for psi is obtained uh, uh, largest phi tau, largest range of phi tau when uh, C is a quadratic irrational. <laughs> so we live here, we live here, quadratic ir ir uh, irrational, let's say like square root of 2. Square root of 2 uh, over 2, for instance. solution of a second degree coefficients with uh, integral coefficients. Well, this is a Diophantine approximation, but it can be much, much smaller. In this case, my reachable space, uh, my reachable space uh, will contain, I, I write in all the directions, for, in this very best case, will contain H2 plus epsilon uh, uh, cap H1 plus 1 for every epsilon, something like that. That's the best I can, I can hope for this system, but it's one of the rare cases when I, I'm able to say something about, uh, about the reachable space in the uh, hyperbolic case. Uh, I mean, to say something when I don't have uh, exact controllability. Okay, let me go now to the main uh, topic uh, of the today lecture, uh, which is uh, the one-dimensional heat equation. And I'll begin with the case of the half line. This is why I did yesterday all the computations in detail. Uh, now I repeat uh, here the results. First, let us look uh, to uh, uh, a heat equation on a half line. Uh, now, here I should have erased, I, I now pass to Dirichlet. So here is W of T0 is equal to U of T. Uh, and uh, initial data zero, and then phi tau will be the value of W at instant tau. Uh, so here it's no derivative. Then we had formulas for the semigroup and for phi tau. And with these uh, two formulas, which solve, in fact, my, my system, uh, I will get a, a well-posed uh, system with um, uh, state space L2 of zero infinity and input space uh, C, the complex number set. I have shown this uh, yesterday. Uh, so this is a typically infinite dimensional e example because it violates almost all the usual properties of finite dimensional ones. Uh, it, this is uh, first a remark. It's approximately controlled at any time. Uh, this is, can be done by our uh, usual uh, duality argument is not complicated. 
Then uh, there is a result which I will not uh, reproof here, but uh, which um, can be obtained quite simply as an application of Hardy's incertitude principle, uh, but uh, which was known uh, before uh, in this particular case, uh, not, not before, which uh, has been proved uh, with different techniques. Uh, in this case, uh, firstly by, uh, uh, in fact, by Miku and Zouazoua, uh, and, and uh, then uh, in a more general context by Escauriaza, Seregin and Schwerak, uh, and uh, uh, in for slightly more general equations by Dardé and Hervedoza in uh, 2020. This result says that the range of Itau cap range of Itau contains only zero which means that there is no other element which you can steer to zero than zero itself. So you are very far from uh, null controllability. Exact controllability, you are even farther. Uh, so this, uh, let me point this uh, very beautiful result of Escauria, Sergin and Schwerak, which has been uh, obtained for completely different purposes, for applications to Navier stocks. Uh, this result of uh, Escauriaza, uh, Seregin and Schwerak uh, says, roughly speaking, so it allows a generalization to several space dimensions. It says that you have, if you have uh, uh, the heat equation of the exterior of a ball, or I don't know, even remember if it's necessarily a ball or not, and that if the solution theta is zero at, at the exterior, at some time tau, then the solution is, is zero. This means that I didn't say anything about boundary conditions. Whatever the boundary condition on the ball will be, I can never reach zero. Uh, so uh, this result has been, uh, uh, let's say, uh, applied to, to for Navier stocks. Uh, and now, uh, the, for us, the most important thing in this example uh, comes from a result of uh, in 1990 of uh, Aikawa, Ayashi and Saito, uh, which tell exact, almost exactly, but in fact they tell exactly, but we are not interested in the exact answer, but they tell exactly which is the reachable space. Uh, so here I just wrote the part which has, I, it interesting me, uh, uh, it, which is a reachable space with inputs which divided by square root of t uh, uh, is in L2. R in L2, and the answer is this space, which is called a Bergman space, a weighted Bergman space. Let me explain it, because it might be a bit uh, surprising already the statement. A priori, what I can reach are functions defined on zero infinity. Uh, my, my states are L2 of zero infinity functions. Those which can be reached have the property that they can be extended holomorphically in this infinite sector, and uh, not only holomorphically, but uh, uh, to functions which are L2 of this infinite sector with the weight omega zero tau, which is defined here, with a certain weight which becomes very large on the real axis and which in fact uh, vanishes on, this, uh, on these two uh, um, orange uh, uh, half lines. So if a set, a set is reachable, if and only if, I can extend it holomorphically to, to, this, uh, uh, to this kind of function. And the proof, I will not give it, is not very complicated, but it requires a bit of preparation. It's really basic complex analysis uh, uh, and uh, reproducing kernel Hilbert spaces. But uh, very basic theory, very basic theories, nothing, uh, nothing uh, particularly uh, uh, sophisticated. Uh, so this is an interesting example because if I, uh, if I accept that this would be a reachable space, I see that it really depends on time also. No, because uh, this, uh, this weight strongly depends on time. Uh, now let, I, let me go to the interval, the case which I'm interested in. Uh, we have shown yesterday that uh, uh, this equation, so I have heat equation on a, on a segment, uh, with a Dirichlet uh, boundary uh, condition at both ends. Uh, and uh, uh, the state space will be H minus 1, the input space will be C2. 
and this is a well posed system. We also know, uh, here we can a, a bit discuss, but maybe later, we also know that it is null controllable in any time. It has been established by Fattorini and Russell uh, uh, in, uh, in the 70s uh, or early 80s. Uh, but in the 70s, it's been established. Uh, but in a certain sense, we will obtain this result. If we want to speak from the beginning, from scratch, about a single reachable space, we use this information. But we are not obliged to. If we route our proof properly, uh, we, we obtain it. Uh, our, our proof is also an alternative proof of uh, null controllability in any time. So what do we, uh, do we know about the reachable space? Uh, the original paper of Fattorini and Russell, not before the original paper of Fattorini and Russell, with PD methods, quite simple. Uh, uh, roughly speaking, I, I can use the formula with the Gaussians, which I showed you last time. Uh, we can show that any reachable state is necessarily holomorphic in this inside, this red square. So here is zero, here is pi, and then I take 45 degrees, uh, uh, lines which cross and I obtain this, uh, this square. So inside is necessarily holomorphic. Of course, uh, one can ask, can I reach any function which is holomorphic inside? Uh, the question uh, began to be studied from the original paper of Fattorini and Russell, so 71. Now I have the year. Uh, they showed there that if I take functions which are holomorphic in a sole strip, in a whole strip like this, horizontal strip uh, of a certain width and which um, vanish together with all the derivatives of even order at the extremities, then I can, I can reach these states. So it's a bit surprising and it's very much connected to the methodology that uh, the states we can reach necessarily vanish on the boundary, which is a bit con logically contradicting the fact that uh, uh, we can control the value on the boundary, so normally we can get at the end whatever we should get at the end, whatever we, we want. Uh, the interest uh, towards this problem has been um, developed recently uh, by, the paper more, by the paper of Martin Rosier and Rouchon, who using, using flatness, he will maybe speak about that uh, during his, uh, his lectures, uh, has shown that if I take uh, a function which is holomorphic in this disk, which is a disk centered in pi over 2, and of radius pi over 2, of this radius which, is, which makes this domain clearly larger than our uh, square, uh, then these functions can be attained. And they showed that they can be attained by very smooth inputs, not L2, uh, but with inputs which are uh, Jeffrey type uh, functions. Uh, so this uh, uh, was a, 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 a surprising, a beautiful uh, result. Uh, and then uh, it came the paper of um, uh, Dardenne and Hervedoza, uh, who showed very quickly after that if I take functions which are holomorphic in an arbitrarily small neighborhood of this, of this square, then I can reach them. Uh, this was, uh, for me, uh, again, an intriguing result because these uh, arbitrary uh, neighborhoods suggest that, in fact, uh, the reachable space should be a, re a, a space of functions which are uh, holomorphic up to the boundary and which have sub satisfies uh, some properties of the boundary. There is no need of epsilon uh, clearly here. Uh, so this, the first result in these directions was uh, the one which I'd done with uh, uh, Hartmann and Kelly, uh, which appeared, uh, it was, very quickly after, but it appeared much later. Uh, and uh, it says that the reachable space is sandwiched between two spaces. I will define them immediately, which is, this is called the uh, Hardy-Smirnov space, and this is called the Bergman space uh, on D. Uh, so there are holomorphic functions only on D. I don't need no, to get out of D. How are these defined? E2 is functions which are holomorphic inside and with a trace, which is L2 at the boundary, roughly speaking, it's a bit more complicated than that, but uh, for smooth domains like our, like our square, it's okay. And the Berman space with a weight omega, 
uh, is the space of functions which are holomorphic inside and uh, which are uh, L2 with respect to this uh, weight. So for if the weight is 1, we write just A2. So this is Berman, this is Hardy Smirnov. So normally Hardy, it's like Hardy spaces, but Hardy spaces, it's used uh, only uh, for the disk and the half plane. If you want for an arbitrary domain, people add Smirnov for very good reasons, which I, uh, which I don't know. Uh, so to go to, to recent uh, results, uh, to go to, to recent results, uh, let me introduce some extra notation. Uh, so I already showed you this sector which I denote by delta, and I take the symmetric one with respect to uh, this line, to the line y is equal to pi over 2, this is delta tilde is equal to pi minus delta, the red one. On each one, I define a weight. Already uh, introduced the weight for the right sector, for delta, and uh, the symmetric one for delta tilde. And I also, uh, a central role will be played by the spaces x delta, which are the sum of these two spaces. What is the sum of these five spaces? A function will be in the sum. It necessarily needs to be defined on the intersection, so on the square. And it can be decomposed in a function from, which is holomorphic in one of the sectors, plus a function which is holomorphic in uh, another one. Uh, so uh, on this space, I can define uh, this norm. We'll see that this space, in fact, will become something very trivial at the end of the talk. But for now, for trivial, very easy to define, but for now I keep this notation, especially due to the norm. The norm is an object which is important uh, in this space and is defined as usual uh, norm on the sum of two spaces, nothing, nothing special. So which are more recent results on, on this problem? So we have shown in a second paper with um, uh, Kelly and Thomas Normand, uh, that the range of phi tau is always equal to x tau. So we have a, an equality between uh, the, uh, the reachable space and this sum of, of uh, Bergman spaces. Uh, then we have also shown that, in fact, strangely enough, this sum does not depend on tau. Each uh, term of the sum depends on tau, but the sum does no longer depend on tau, and it's equal to the sum of the unweighted Bergman spaces. Uh, this result has been obtained also by other methods directly uh, in a first paper of, uh, uh, of uh, Orsoni. And then uh, complex analysts, uh, so Andreas Harman with his student uh, Orsoni, looked uh, to this problem. What, uh, what is the connection about, uh, between this sum and the Berman space on the, on the square? And the answer is that you have equality. Uh, so this is a purely complex analytic result. So finally, we can assert that the range of e tau does not depend on tau, and it's always the Berman's unweighted Berman space of the square. Still, x tau is important because the control cost will be the norm in x tau. So, so the, when I say that it's a2 of t, this is not a topological identification. There is equivalence. But the equivalence constant depends on time. Equivalence of the norm. Okay? So if I don't want to have the equivalence, I should say it's, this is topologically more, uh, more uh, let's say, informative. The, f the very first uh, result. Uh, so how do we prove this? But nevertheless, this final answer is very beautiful. You, you cannot uh, hope better. Uh, and we conjectured it in the first, uh, in the first paper, in fact. Uh, how do I prove that? Uh, so here I, uh, I rewrite uh, the formulas which I have uh, introduced yesterday. Uh, so uh, phi tau u, I can write it as the sum of the contrib uh, this is the solution in the right sector, the solution in the left sector, and all the other terms, which in fact I will see them uh, as perturbations. Why? Because if I look to these um, uh, to this um, exponential, there is this m, when x uh, uh, is between 0 and pi, which will always be my case, no? uh, these exponentials become very small. So this will be 
rapidly converging series. Uh, and uh, uh, so the difference between phi tau minus the sum of uh, phi to left and phi to right applied here, I apply this to square root of t u. Why? Because for the reachable space, I have the remark that this will not change my reachable space. See again, if I use Russell result. But I can also say that no, I just look to the uh, range of functions of form square root of t u. I can say that for the moment. I, I just look to that uh, because I have this brilliant idea, but in fact I have it because uh, I, I uh, know a, a number of things. Uh, and uh, uh, this, I, we can evaluate it becomes small. And somehow uh, for, the, uh, uh, for the range, it, it, it will not matter. All the rest. So, in fact, uh, this has to be proved rigorously, and this, we can prove it rigorously for small time, for small time. But that's enough for our purpose. For, our, uh, for small time, this, these terms are, in a certain sense, neglectable, all this. So, in fact, the range for small tau will be the range of this plus the range of that. And uh, here, uh, and that's essentially all the proof, because the proof of the range of that plus the range of that is the sum. It's exactly x tau uh, according to the results of uh, uh, Saito and co authors. So, that's practically uh, the end of the proof, the idea. Uh, uh, is in uh, one slide, uh, uh, and then how do you how do you conclude? So then we can say that the range of function of uh, form square root of t u uh, for tau small is x tau. Uh, that's very good. This in particular tells me that I can uh, it tells tells me that range of uh, uh, phi, phi tau even restricted to the smaller space, it tells me in particular that range of phi tau contains range of t tau. If I didn't know that. If I didn't know that, I, I, I get it now. So I have null controllability. So this means that the result which I obtained on the range of phi tau restricted to this smaller space will give me the real uh, reachable, the whole reachable space. So I don't need to use explicitly uh, null controllability. If I take care how I write the proof, I, I can reobtain it, which is already something which is um, uh, not uh, completely um, uh, useless because, in fact, uh, null controllability heat of the heat equation is one of the problems for which I don't know any simple proof, even in 1D, uh, there is, uh, to my knowledge, any simple proof. If for the wave equations in 1D, for instance, you have very simple proofs, it is not the case for, for the equation. I don't claim that this proof is simpler than, uh, uh, than the original uh, Russell uh, Fattorini one, but it's comparable, I would say. Uh, but this is not the main thing. The main thing is here that we have the reachable space. What about several space dimensions? Uh, because this is a problem which certainly uh, appears. Uh, there is only one result, uh, essentially one result, uh, to my knowledge, uh, obtained by Stromeyer and Waters, uh, which says the following thing. If omega is a ball and I control on the whole boundary, then the reachable space contains functions which are holomorphic. When I write here uh, closure of EF omega, it means in, the, in an arbitrary neighborhood of EF omega, like in Dardet and Hervé-Dosa. Uh, and uh, uh, where EF omega is this domain in Cn. So here, if omega is in Rn, the reachable function will be formed by functions which can be uh, extended holomorphically to a certain domain in Cn. And this domain, it's here. Very simple proof, surprisingly simple, but very uh, ingenious, which even in 1D gives um, uh, a simplification of the proof of uh, Dardet and Hervé Doza. It's just a very simple um, uh, symmetry argument. Uh, 
uh, and uh, uh, it uh, provides this result. The question is uh, open for arbitrary domain, for instance, for a rectangle. For a rectangular domain, one should, could hope that 1D approach could be generalized, which I think is true, but uh, it has not been done. Uh, so, uh, also the conjecture is that this essentially holds for an arbitrary domain. Uh, this is a conjecture in particular of Gilles Lebeau, uh, but the proof is not, uh, is not written. Okay, so now this is for, uh, just for the heat equation uh, uh, with uh, constant uh, coefficient. Uh, we can add results. We, we, in, in these papers, we, we, I, I didn't uh, uh, put it on the slides. There are results which tell us uh, which are the reachable spaces when I take inputs which are, are smoother than L2. We can completely characterize this, and this has important applications. Uh, now about uh, the robustness of the reachable space with respect to perturbation. So we, uh, we can uh, reasonably hope, hope that some of these results uh, would hold if instead of my heat equation in 1D, theta xx, I would add, for instance, a potential. A of x uh, theta with uh, A uh, holomorphic. Hall of... Uh, D bar, I put D bar in sense uh, in, a, in a neighborhood of the famous set D. Of course, I cannot hope uh, such robustness of original space if A is not holomorphic. Uh, there is no more reason to have holomorphic uh, states. Uh, so, can we do that? Uh, it's not so simple, in particular because even in finite dimension, reachable space is not. Uh, stable with respect to perturbations, even small ones. Uh, for infinite dimensional, and for, of course for finite dimensional ones also, exact controllability is robust. Uh, and it's easy to prove. Uh, so uh, we would like to obtain robustness property for the reachable space of the heat equation. And for uh, the, the original idea when we began to work on that was that we want to treat the system as an exactly controllable one, which of course it is not. The heat equation is far of an exactly controllable system. But uh, uh, that's essentially how, what we did. I'll explain immediately why. How. The theorem which we have for the moment says that uh, if it's an abstract one again. Uh, so I take my generator A. I perturb it by an operator P which is bounded in X, that's somehow not really necessary, but useful to know that I still have a semi-group, but also which uh, it's bounded on the reachable space at some time tau zero. So if I think to my heat equation, it should send analytic functions in D in analytic functions in D. Uh, and uh, if, moreover, his norm in this space is small, I have invariance uh, of the... Uh, reachable space with respect to these small perturbations. So these are the papers with Sylvain and Kevin. Uh, and uh, uh, we have also another result, which I will not state in detail. Uh, so for exactly control of the tip, you have two types of perturbations which work well. One is small, and the other one is compact, where when people use what's called compactness uniqueness arguments, uh, which is essentially what we have done here. So under a, a kind of compactness assumption, so it sends a space, which is not a state space, but it's still, for applications of sobolev style space, it will send in the range of phi tau. Uh, then, with a unique uh, how to type condition, on, or sometimes call it unique uh, uh, continuation condition, but an elliptic one, uh, a stationary one, uh, I, I get invariance of the reachable space. So here, I don't have smallness, but I have two things. I have a kind of compactness and, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a uniqueness uh, condition. These are two types of results. So this one, so Sylvain will make a, a, a talk, uh, uh, not here, but uh, recent, uh, has been, a, in a certain sense, improved in a recent work of, uh, of, uh, uh, of Sylvain and 
uh, his uh, PhD student Adrian Tandani. Uh, but as far as I understood, still with that epsilon, uh, which is uh, quite uh, unpleasant. A basic ingredient in proving this is the following thing. Uh, our semigroup, so we have our semigroup, TT, which acts on X. Uh, I know that uh, uh, TT will map also range of phi tau to range of phi tau. No, because uh, range of phi tau contains range of, of T tau by, uh, by the null controllability. What we prove here is that this, rest, so I can restrict T to the range, I obtain T, T tilt. This is still a C0 semigroup, so it's quite important. C0 with respect to the norm of, of this guy. So if I think to our example, it's with respect to the norm of the Bergman space. Of our, uh, so this, we are very happy with this result. It's a very an important ingredient. In fact, very recently, I found, I found a paper from the 1980s, a Van Nerven, uh, containing this result. So, uh, I, of course, I, we acknowledge now, but we were far of knowing it uh, at the moment where we um, uh, published uh, the paper. Uh, so, uh, then I have a C0 semi-group of Vital, and my system, I can restrict it to this state space, and I get an exactly controllable one. Of course, by definition. By definition, uh, phi tau will be onto now, on, on its range. It's, it's, a, it's a triviality, but let me remark that in my definition of controllability, which is important, I, I merged controllability and admissibility. I defined the exact controllability only for well-posed system. So uh, the well-posedness is important for what we will do later on for perturbation, it's essential. Uh, okay, so I have exact controllability in any time. So once we have that, uh, things uh, uh, become, uh, become simpler. Uh, let me uh, just sketch the proof of the, of the strong continuity on range of phi before uh, going to, uh, uh, to applications, but to, to, to other applications. Uh, so, uh, what I want to prove, uh, we want to prove strong continuity at zero. For this, there is a classical result of Hille, which says that you, you have a semi-group of operators. It suffices to prove that it's bounded near zero, that the norm is bounded near zero. Uh, then you obtain strong continuity. This holds for reflexive Banach spaces, in particular for Hilbert spaces. So we just want to prove this. According to Hiller's result, uh, we can get uh, uh, strong continuity. So first, uh, we, we note, of course, this trivial fact that uh, the norm of TT eta in the range of phi tau is smaller than some constant, depending on tau, than the norm of the same quantity in the range of phi to tau. This is, again, uh, uh, a consequence of the fact that what I can do in time tau, I can do also in time, two tau. So this is trivial. We will see a bit uh, on the next slide that uh, uh, the range of uh, TT eta in range of phi, phi, uh, phi two tau is smaller than the range of eta in uh, uh, phi two tau minus T, provided that T is in zero tau. So this is that quantity. I can bound it by uh, eta this. So putting these two together, I obtained that the norm of TT eta in the range of uh, phi tau is smaller than some constant, the norm of eta in the range of phi two tau minus t. But since t is in, in between zero and tau, two tau minus t is larger than t. So I, 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 got, I got the conclusion. Uh, so how I proved inequality, which was, um, was missing, which is this one. The norm of TT eta in range of phi tau smaller than the norm of eta in the range of phi two tau minus t. Uh, so to this aim, uh, so I I, uh, I want to estimate the norm, the smallest possible norm. Of the co what it, what does this mean? Because this notation might be disturbing. What does this mean? This means the minimal norm of an L two control 
which steers zero to t theta in time to tau. Okay, let me try to estimate it. Uh, uh, eta, but eta, I know, is, uh, is, can be reached in time tau. So I want to estimate. Uh, no. Uh, t tau uh, eta can be reached in time tau. Okay? Uh, so, uh, I take an u in this space, which is, uh, which has the property that phi tau minus uh, t u is equal to eta. And, uh, and this, this why, why does it exist? This exists, obviously, uh, beca because uh, my uh, element is in the range of phi tau. Uh, and then uh, we define uh, we uh, we define a new input u tilde, which is uh, zero at the end, and which is this uh, u of t uh, between zero and two tau minus t. Now, what I what I do know uh, from the informations which I know here, essentially this one, you know, uh, I I can say that uh, phi two tau u, so the state with initial data zero uh, and with control u tilde at time two tau, it will be is equal to t theta. And this, uh, the norm of this control u tilde will be just the norm of u because it's vanishing uh, at the end. So now what I have obtained, I have obtained uh, a control u tilde which steers zero to t theta in time two tau. So the norm of t theta in time two tau will be the norm of, um, of course, of phi 2 tau u tilde, which is the norm, by definition, the norm of u tilde in L2 of 0 tau u, which is, by construction of u tilde, the norm of u in L2 of 0 2 tau minus t u. Okay, so once I, I did that, I'm, I'm done. Uh, so this is true for every u in L2 of 0 to tau minus Tu, having the property that phi 2 tau minus Tu is eta. Then I take the infinum, infi, infinum uh, of that, and uh, I, I obtain what's written here. Because the, this norm is just the norm of the infinum, the, the smallest U, which allows me to reach T tau uh, minus T eta in time, uh, uh, in time 2 tau minus T. So it's a bit technical, but it's fully elementary. And here, it, there is really the whole proof. Nothing is missing. Uh, and essentially, as I mentioned, uh, the same proof can be found in the paper of uh, Van Nerven. Uh, and uh, so what would this give for, for uh, applications? Uh, so uh, here we took. Uh, this gives me the opportunity to, to answer to a question which maybe could be raised. What happens uh, if you have other boundary conditions for the heat equation, then Dirichlet at both ends? In fact, we can answer to, very simply to any, in 1D, uh, to any combination of Dirichlet and Neumann boundary conditions uh, of various ends. Not combinations of them, but I can take at zero either Dirichlet or Neumann at, uh, uh, at pi, also, either the or Neumann for any combination, we give an answer. Of course, the reachable states will will uh, will change, but there will be essentially only symmetry arguments. In particular, if I have Neumann at two ends, so here again I have a well-posed system, but it's a nicer in a certain way than uh, than the system for um, uh, Dirichlet because the state space will be L two, no longer H minus one. Uh, and the reachable space, in fact, uh, uh, by taking the derivative with respect to x everywhere here, I get the same system with Dirichlet boundary control. It's very trivial. So somehow uh, these functions, the reachable states here, are the, uh, the, func the functions which derivated lie in the reachable space for the Dirichlet case. So uh, I know here from this very simple consideration that the range of phi tau is a1 of d, a1 2 of d, where what is a1 2 of d? It's in fact uh, the functions with a derivative in the Bergman space a2 of d. So it's uh, the intersection with the Sobolev space, if you went here, what we have written here. 
uh, of course, they still holomorphic uh, inside. So why do we consider this? Because we want to add here some potential multiplied by z. So this is more difficult in h minus 1. If z is just an h minus 1 function, so uh, we, we would uh, prefer to have z in L2. That's why we consider here this example. So we know which is a reachable space. And now uh, we can state that if I take add here a perturbation, which is here in red, uh, pz with p small in w one infinity norm uh, and holomorphic, of course, uh, then uh, the reachable space will not change. So it will be exactly the same. Uh, okay. Uh, this is a clear application of uh, our abstract result because the operator which to z associates pz will be a bounded linear operator on, uh, on the state space. P is in W1 infinity, so the derivative will also be well behaved. Uh, and uh, the other type of perturbation, this motivated, in fact, our work on perturbation, uh, is a paper, was a paper of um, uh, Zoazua and Fernandez Cara, which consider perturbation at, the, at this type, integral perturbation, uh, non-local operator, so with respect to the space variable, with this function k analytic with respect to the x variable. They considered it analytic, practically an integral function, very strong assumptions in their paper. So uh, they uh, uh, required uh, analyticity and also vanishing uh, of every even order on the boundary. Uh, so. Uh, uh, under these assumptions, they have shown, and under this kind of uniqueness assumption, which I look is time independent, uh, uh, they have shown that they still have null controllability. They are not interested in the reachable space. Uh, but in fact, they also give, they are not interested, but they implicitly provided a very small reachable space uh, in, in this case. Uh, so, our result says that under these assumptions, and uh, the novelty is uh, not only that uh, we um, uh, speak about reachable space, but also that our assumptions at k are much, much weaker. We just uh, need k to be uh, holomorphic uh, in D with respect to the x variable. So, as in the previous example, holomorphic plus Sobolev in D. Uh, and uh, with respect to y, not much. Uh, usual regularity assumptions. Uh, under these assumptions, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, invariance of the reachable space. Of so the reachable space, uh, this part of problem is the same as for the uh, single heat equation. No smallness here. But this condition, which there are examples when it's not true. Uh, generally, it is true, but uh, we did the uh, example. We, we, we cannot assert that it is always true under the assumptions uh, of the theorem, under the other assumptions of the theorem. Uh, so here I said that I will mention also reachability with smooth inputs. Now I come back to the original problem, and uh, I will take inputs which are in this space, WN2 of 0 tau, which are functions uh, no, no, WLN2, what is WLN2? Are functions which are in the usual Sobolev space WN2, uh, and we vanish together with all the derivatives uh, at some, uh, uh, at zero. Not all the derivatives, of course, uh, up to n minus one at, uh, at zero. Then the uh, reachable space with this kind of inputs, this kind of inputs, uh, will be the space uh, a n2 of d, what is a n2 of d? So uh, is defined here. It's the functions which are in a2, which all the derivatives up to order 2n uh, lying in a2. So I, I take, instead of taking functions which are just in the Berman space, I take functions with derivatives up to order 2n uh, in, the, uh, in the Berman space, and then I can reach them with inputs which are not L2, which are much smoother, which are W and 2, and we satisfy some boundary condi compatibility condition. That's absolutely normal, because if these conditions are violated, 
my solution will no longer be smooth. I cannot hope any extra smoothness. smoothness. Uh, so this is a, a very simple uh, argument, which uh, is inspired by an, an older paper uh, of mine with uh, George Weiss, uh, where we just uh, give uh, the, rich, uh, the controllable spaces with, uh, uh, with um, smooth inputs uh, by a simple integration in time procedure. So some concluding uh, remarks. Ah, so this has been used in combination with the previous perturbation results. We have used it in the paper with Kebin and Sylvain to discuss some nonlinear examples. So we can study also nonlinear perturbations in a certain sense, but uh, perturbations of the type. Uh, uh, so my equation will be like uh, theta dot minus theta xx plus theta three is equal to zero. Polynomial nonlinearities. Uh, for these ones, we are able to say that we can reach uh, a certain ball uh, in the, we have a local result in the reachable space. Uh, so these are the type of results which uh, come out for nonlinear. And this is somehow uh, uh, an application of the previous one, because locally, th uh, theta three will be a small coefficient times theta. So we do a fixed point procedure, which is pretty standard in controllability theory. Some concluding remarks. Uh, this can be connected with a very uh, uh, studied uh, open problem in, um, in control theory, which is determining the optimal cost in small time, uh, optimal control cost in small time for the heat equation. So for an, uh, I, uh, what is the control cost? The control cost is the observability constant, if you, if you want, by duality, uh, or is this norm exactly? So it's the smallest, uh, it, it somehow controls me the norm of the smallest control, which steers my system from zero to t tau c. Uh, and uh, uh, due to our, uh, to, to our uh, results, in the case of the 1D heat equation, uh, d tau, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, so it should be C tau here. Uh, C tau is equal to exactly this quantity. So it's the norm of T tau of C in X tau, in that sum of two Bergman spaces. This is a, the control cost. Uh, and uh, so we can find it. Uh, we can in practice find it. How, how, how do I find it? I take, uh, I, I take a function uh, which uh, uh, the T tau of C, which is a function which is analytic everywhere. And I decompose it in a sum, I can decompose it in an infinity of manners, in a function which is uh, holomorphic in one sector, plus a function holomorphic in the other sector. It's really an infinity of, of, of manners because this guy is an analytic function. It's an entire function in the whole plane. Uh, but of course, I want to decompose it to make this constant the smallest possible. Uh, so uh, this uh, constant, uh, so this d tau, uh, so no, yeah, in small tau, essentially, this constant is the one which gives me the cost. And what do you know about this cost? Uh, we know that this cost behaves like exponential of some uh, constant, capital K, which is a geometric constant over tau. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, and uh, there is a lot of work more or less recent, on how to determine the best constant. So if I have here an optimal decomposition in sum of two functions, I will have an optimal constant. Uh, so there is a whole, uh, let's say, ac activity on this constant with other methods. Uh, we don't have yet the optimal one. Uh, and we tried also with this method. We obtained something, but unfortunately, it is not very good. It is like three times more than the optimal one which is known. Uh, so this may be a track to get the optimal constant, but uh, for the moment, uh, we were not successful uh, in this uh, direction. Other questions to be studied, several space dimensions, the most interesting one, I think, but far from being the easiest one. Internal control has been partially studied by, uh, in particular by Lionel Rosier and, and co-authors. It's a much easier question, but, uh, but still uh, uh, there are things to do. 
in particular, not exactly for internal control, but for pointwise control, what happens if my equation is theta dot minus theta xx, as I mentioned, plus u of t, some Dirac mass pointwise control. So here, uh, so for internal control, due to cutoff arguments, I'm obliged to keep the epsilon, uh, which we want to avoid. Uh, but for this one, there is some hope uh, to uh, precisely give uh, the reachable states. But in terms of the Diophantine arithmetic properties of this Xi, uh, it could be an interesting uh, uh, issue. Yes, thank you very much. Um, and also a natural question perhaps is to um, consider, let's say, LP controls. Um, uh, and in this case, for, uh, for P, uh, um, you know, you consider uh, L2 controls at yeah. the boundary and you say that also with smooth control you can characterize the reachable space. But for instance, um, um, if you take LP controls for P uh, different from two, can you also characterize precisely the reachable space? No, no, unfortunately not. This is a purely uh, Hilbert space methodology. Uh, yes. uh, what is, and uh, this is a very important question, what's the most important case, I think, it's L infinity inputs. Uh, L infinity, because L infinity uh, is something which will appear a lot in my last lecture, uh, is connected to time optimal control problems. Uh, so, uh, if, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, uh, we can uh, we cannot characterize exactly, but of course, using Sobolev embeddings, we can give uh, inclusions okay. uh, in both uh, sense. If this is uh, useful or not, uh, it's to be done, but directly applying this method, I don't know, I don't know why. Maybe it, it can be done, but uh, uh, what I think really, for me, the important case is L-infinity. Uh, other other piece uh, would be interesting, but I think less important. Okay. Thank you. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. One. Yes. Ah, yeah. Yes, it, it's about this uh, condition on the function t. Okay, uh, yes. Do you know the motivation? Uh, this one? Yes, because here you uh, it's, uh, this is uh, the the analog of, of saying uh, when you uh, when you do compactness uniqueness that uh, uh, so uh, uh, it's the complete analog of this when you when when we write the operator so i have z dot is equal to a z plus p z plus b u uh, i know that a b is exactly controllable uh, i also know that p is compact Then uh, A plus B with all these assumptions, then uh, A, uh, I would like to say that A plus B, A plus P, B, uh, uh, is exactly controllable. For this, I need an extra assumption, uh, which is that the kernel of lambda identity minus A minus P, minus A minus P, is reduced to zero. It's just this. Is a unique continuation, which you find in uh, uh, in uh, in the lecture notes of uh, Burke and Gerard and everything. So, uh, when you have a perturbation by a compact operator, uh, this perturbation preserves controllability, exact controllability, uh, provided this is practically necessary and sufficient. Is necessary and sufficient uh, uh, if uh, I have this. Uh, you can call it unique continuation, this uh, spectral condition. So, so, so. S sorry? So, if I have, if I, uh, this is not, uh, this is, 
with that several I don't I don't claim that I uh, so here so here I have extra conditions normally I have a second order operator uh, and I have four conditions you say that with this I should be sure that is zero no I'm not sure I can construct examples where this is not zero if you call yeah because this if I have roughly speaking if this kernel would be different of zero uh, I, I will have in, I will have solutions of the form uh, so if I have lambda phi is equal to a plus p phi uh, if I take uh, a solution of the form exponential of lambda t uh, uh, phi this one is not observable no, it's, it's well known uh, so it's it's very, very basic compactness uniqueness but to apply it uh, here in this context I need it to um, uh, to have an exactly controllable system you, you don't have this for the heat equation if, if you ask the same question directly for the heat equation I perturb the heat equation by a p whatever do I preserve the null controllability there is no result uh, like this uh, but for exact controllability these results are common and it's in PD community they call it compactness uniqueness uh, in uh, system theory they call it uh, how to's condition and of course our result is it's only in 1D so with this degree of pressure because my reachable space was only in 1D Zoazu and Kara it's in any space dimensions but with a much smaller space because it's for free uh, in, a, in a way it's, it's the same thing uh, and uh, uh, because uh, often I uh, uh, often but not here often I use uh, frequency domain tools uh, uh, which require to, to, to be in the complex plane but this changes nothing for my problem because if I take you real the solution will be real uh, so it really is changing uh, strictly nothing uh, to to our problem thank you <laughs>